Dio, say hi. 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 Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey everyone, today we're talking about creating the ideal conditions for whatever houseplant you might be growing. The first thing to do is to figure out the genus of the plant. For instance, this is a philodendron. So you're going to go onto Wikipedia, take a look at where that genus of plant is from or originated, and then figure out the climate conditions of that region. We found out that the philodendrons primarily come from Venezuela and kind of the northern part of South America, as well as the Caribbean, that kind of area down there off the coast of Florida, which makes sense, as well as Europe and other parts of Africa when all of that, those continents were kind of clustered up during Pangaea. So now that we found out the ideal conditions and humidity of about 80% year round average, that's what we want to create in the space around the plant. Now, when you're caring for different varieties of plants like Monstera, but also philodendron and maybe some mantheriums back there, it's kind of tough to figure out the balance between those climates, but you want to kind of create an in-between point. I know Monstera Deliciosa is primarily from Mexico and it's a bit drier in Mexico than it would be around the equatorial regions of the Americas. So in this space, I kind of settle on about a 70% relative humidity range, that's the amount of water that's in the air around the leaf. And that number, the relative humidity is super important for the plant's health because as it opens its pores, the stomata or stoma on the leaves, it's gonna exchange the air back and forth with a more humid or moist air versus a drier one. And that can heavily affect the plant. It can also affect how the plant unfurls leaves. Sometimes they'll get caught and stuck in the leaf sleeve as they're unfurling. And that's typically because of too little humidity. I've also seen the opposite in like 80 plus percent on a Monstera Adansani. I've seen the shoot actually die back and kind of blacken, which is too much for the Monstera Adansani. That's why I go with about 70% in this grow space that has philodendron, Monstera, Anthurium, Alocasia, Syngonium, a bunch of different genus or genera of plants. So let's go through these conditions one by one. First up is temperature. Most of these tropical plants prefer a temperature in Fahrenheit between 70 degrees Fahrenheit and about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything above 85 into the 90s, photosynthesis tends to slow down or stop to protect the plant. The plant goes into a bit of an emergency mode and will stop growing and photosynthesizing really above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So to adjust this temperature, you're going to obviously use heaters to increase the temperature or you're going to use an air conditioner to decrease that temperature. But remember with both these methods, you're going to typically decrease the humidity. Adding heat tends to dry out that air around and on an air conditioner if you ever look at like a window unit it's typically dripping water out of the back and that's the condensation because it's pulled that humidity out of the air and now it's dripping off the unit so just remember whether you're heating or cooling the air that you're going to typically decrease humidity and pull the water out of the air so sometimes these forces will fight in different ways next up humidity in most cases we're trying to increase the humidity of our growing space again for tropical plants you're shooting for between 70 and 80 ish percent humidity i like 70 as a good medium point for kind of all tropical plants and a very simple way to do this is spraying your plants down Earlier, I was checking the humidity in here before doing this video. I noticed it was really low, so I put a little neem oil concentrate in this spray bottle, and I just spray down all the plants. And all of a sudden, the humidity was already back up to 75% from 60. Now, it tends to be a temporary change when you're doing something like just spraying, but it can help in a smaller space. Another great option that most of you know of is a humidifier. You add in water to the bottom, it evaporates the water, and your space will naturally increase in humidity. Another option I've been playing with more is an ultrasonic fogger. These things are like $15 on Amazon and it's putting out a bunch of little water droplets and fog into the air and this eventually will increase the humidity in your space. You can get bigger size versions of these. They usually use them in ponds and things like that, but this is a method to increase the humidity of your space. It's smart to put things like that on a timer and run them kind of periodically every 15 minutes or something like that. 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. And finally on humidity, sometimes you'll actually have to decrease humidity and you're gonna be using a dehumidifier for that or an air conditioner or a heater. Cause again, those are drying out the air. These are less typical because most people's spaces aren't 
you know, in the 90s and 100% humidity, but sometimes you'll have to use a dehumidifier. To monitor this temperature and humidity, use basic things like these cheap little thermometers. I believe these are both from Amazon. This one does both temperature uh, on this attached probe, as well as I believe it has a temperature sensor inside the body of this. So it does inside outside as well as relative humidity. Right now we've got 67%, so that's almost right on. And just for simplicity, I'm a big fan of this little, it's actually a water temperature sensor. So this is completely waterproof, but it also just naturally measures the ambient air. So this is really good. Just to kind of, I have these all laying around the shop so I can kind of check different points of a big grow space like this, because also if you're not circulating the air with a fan on, I have one right above my head that I've off for this video, but you want to also circulate that air around to strengthen your plants and also make sure that there's no hot points or cold points in your grow space. I'll link these things like this down in the description. And finally, for the air around your plant, we've gone over temperature, we've gone over humidity. Next up is CO2. So CO2 is carbon dioxide, as many of you know. It's what we breathe out and it's what plants breathe in. The typical CO2 level is about 450 parts per million on the planet. This level has been increasing, whether you like it or not and believe in climate change or not. The level of CO2 has increased from about, I believe, 290 or 300 parts per million to about 450. Now, this comes with increased growth for our plants. Many people also use CO2 injection in typical medical marijuana growing facilities to increase growth and yields of their plants. But for the average person, you're going to want to simply exchange the air in your growing space. This is ideally done every five to 10 minutes in very you know, advanced and energy consuming spaces. They'll do this every minute. So it's important once a day, for instance, this grow room, when the lights go off, I have a photo cell that notices that there's no lights on and a fan kicks on to take out all of the air of this room and then exchanges it so that for the next growing day for tomorrow, that I'll have a fresh set of CO2 in this space. And going over that light again, we want to maximize the um, total amount of light before burning the plant so that these plants grow as fast as possible. And I'm running these grow lights at about 16 hours on, eight hours off, 18 on, six off works great. And I've also in the past, have I've used 20 on, four off. So these are all different light levels and light quantities that you can give your plants. But we are again trying to recreate the ideal system of light, air, humidity, water, fertilizer. And remember that around the equator, they're typically getting 12 and 12, 12 hours on, 12 hours off all year round. But the ideal thing to give your plants is kind of between 14 and 20 hours of light per day if you're really trying to supercharge that growth. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go over the water at the roots, not water in the air, but water in your root system. The best way you can understand a plant is by looking at the leaf. This is a Monstera Peru. And just based on that plant, I don't have to look it up on Wikipedia. I bet this plant is from Peru. And this leaf is like a turtle shell. It's very thick and very tough, meaning it's able to hold in a lot more water than your typical philodendron, like this Paraiso Verde. It has a very soft leaf. I can tell that this plant is gonna need a whole lot more water than that Monstera Peru. The shell of the leaf, it's called the cuticle, just like on our fingers. That is like the thick, waxy, hydrophobic, so water repelling, fatty part of the leaf. And that's what's holding in all of the vacuole and all of the water that's within this leaf. So depending on what plant we're talking about, the first thing to do to figure out how much water it's gonna need is obviously listen to your plants, look at them, see what they need. But if you want a little cheat code, just feel the leaf. If it's very thick, like a fiddle leaf fig tree has a very leathery leaf, even a Monstera deliciosa has a much thicker leaf. Monstera in particular versus philodendron tends to have a much thicker leaf, again, from Mexico, not South America, close to the equator, a little drier, it's gonna protect its leaf. Think of a cactus or a Hoya. It has a very thick leaf that doesn't need as much water as something like a Syngonium that has like a paper thin leaf, but grows like crazy. It probably is from an area that is maybe along a river or a bay that's repeatedly getting watered all the time. And finally, we have up fertilizer. Most of these plants, again, are from the understory of a rainforest. So they're typically under a bunch of trees that are repeatedly losing leaves and a bunch of animals are running around up there and 
go into the bathroom, which is full of nitrogen and other nutrients, and the other plants are losing leaves, and dead leaves are great at creating new leaves because they have exactly the right nutrients in them. When you see a leaf fall and lay and go green to brown, it's losing all of that nitrogen back into the soil. And these plants are growing right in that same soil. So when you're fertilizing, these tropical houseplants can take a lot of fertilizer. It also makes that sense if you think about like a sage or like a lavender or a, a, a woody-like plant from the deserts, they don't have a lot of nutrients in their soil. So they actually don't need a whole lot of nutri nutrients when they're growing. So something like a monstera that's growing in a jungle with tons of you know, food around it in that soil, it's gonna be able to take a lot of nutrients. And I've found that monstera and philodendron can take a ton of fertilizer and nutrient to make them grow faster. So to summarize, trying to recreate the ideal situation for your plant is based on where that plant's origin is. Figure out where it's from, figure out the conditions it survives in best and what it's naturally acclimated to, and then try and recreate that to the best of your ability. Obviously, there's some things we're not gonna be able to exactly do, and a lot of these things are energy intensive, so we don't wanna you know, consume too much power doing it, and we always wanna do it in the most energy efficient way, like using LED lights, or actually not even using an air conditioner like we do here. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video about learning about the ideal houseplant conditions. If you guys want to go into deeper detail in pH and water chemistry and pesticides and roots and all of those different things, we can do that also. But I wanted to keep kind of a high level for creating the ideal IKEA cabinet or grow room space to keep your tropical houseplants. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you next Saturday for another video about tropical houseplants. Can you say bye? Bye. 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 Bye.